I'm Manny Tarijon of La Salle Bacolod 75 and TAF 80. Bienvenidos! Welcome to Pangrejo! Cangrejos Locos. I've read about Cangrejos Locos for at least a year now, and uh, I've always wanted to come over and taste their crabs and their paella. I'm here today with Mali Torrejon, a member of the Infonus Bench Boys of La Salle. It would, we would like to hear more about what the restaurant is all about from the horse's mouth. Amigos, may I present to you Manny Torrejon. Hi, Manny. Stop. Finally, I get to, to visit your restaurant. And I'm really surprised that you're about, what, three-fourths full? Three-fourths full. This is Unusual for uh, this uh, stage in the restaurant industry. Correct. And uh, tell me more about uh, Cangrejos well, Locos. Cangrejos was born out of, uh, of an idea to put up a Spanish restaurant. Uh, between uh, friends, Raymond Magdaluyo, Robbie Goko, and myself. So we met couple, uh, about two years ago, thought about the concept, and we said we wanted something that's going to be Spanish, but fun. Not too stiff, you know, not like the usual Spanish restaurants that you go to that are, you know, with the mariachi, with the band. We, we just wanted a fun place to go to and stick to a very authentic Spanish cuisine. So we thought about different names, but eventually, because Ro, um, Raymond, as you know, owns uh, crab restaurants. So Red we Crab said, Group. Yeah, Red Crab Group. So we said, why don't we have a Spanish uh, crab place? So Congress Locos was born, not only to serve crabs, but also to serve paellas, and authentic paellas, which are Barcelona-style, thin-style paellas, which um, are very flavorful, and uh, at the same time, uh, very reasonably priced. We wanted reasonable pricing because we feel that other Spanish restaurants are pricing themselves too high. So when we opened this uh, early this year, I mean, we had a barrage of customers. We were always full until March happened. So from January, uh, February, March, we were doing so well. Unfortunately, COVID-19 happened. So we're still here. We're keeping afloat and we're trying to stay alive. But we've gotten a lot of very, very good reviews. And uh, I think there'll be more people coming as the confidence level of our clients go up. Well, you have a powerful team of uh, the um, Red Crab Group. And the SEMA Group. And the SEMA Group. Very powerful. It's really, I'm really surprised that you were able to get together. Was it easy dealing with this? Uh, of course, well, Chef Chef uh, Goko yeah, is Chef famous for yeah. his uh, for, Greek for his cuisine. Greek cuisine. Well, we uh, actually the idea was really born out of Robbie and myself uh, because we went to Spain in 2013 and we just enjoyed the trip immensely because it was a culinary trip that we went to San Sebastian, we went to Barcelona, we went to Madrid, and you know. Uh, I have Spanish uh, heritage. Uh, my grandfather's from Spain. I was born here and my father was born here. Uh, I was playing first time in Spain in 2013. So I just felt at home. And I was, we were tasting all kinds of Spanish food from paellas to calios to uh, polio, polio and other items. Uh, even uh, even uh, percebes, which is barnacles. Fantastic cuisine. So, Robin and I said, when we went back to Manila, why don't we open? Since I had my Manolos already and he had his uh, Sima. So, we were both in restaurant business. So, we said, why don't we open a Spanish restaurant? Because we enjoyed the trip so much. So, then uh, Robin talked to Raymond. And Raymond was already a friend because Raymond has a big chain of restaurants. And he said, Raymond, why don't you join us? and let's put up a Spanish restaurant. So this was born out of that uh, idea and that uh, love for Spanish food. So Manny, during your trip to Spain, and I'm sure you had a gastronomic experience. Yes, definitely. Uh, tasting all the Spanish dishes. How do you compare the Spanish cuisine to the Spanish cuisine in the Philippines? 
Well, the Spanish cuisine in the Philippines is an adaptation of the Spanish food because of our Spanish heritage. The Spaniards were here, but they didn't really teach us the tricks of the, you know, of the, of the or the tricks of the recipes. So our um, our Spanish food here has been a bit uh, bastardized, not really bastardized, but it's not the authentic Spanish way. So like in paella, we have we put eggs, we put chorizo. In Spain, you can't find a chorizo in paella. Really? Yes. That is like you know, uh, that is like suicide if you do that. They 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 squirm at the thought of having chorizo in paella, but here. It's it's all over it's the place. Must. Yes, and eggs, hard boiled eggs. So, basic paella is really just if you look at the original paella, which is Valenciana, it's just rabbit. We don't have rabbit. It's just uh, snail and uh, beans. So that's the basic paella. You have to stay authentic to that you know, to that uh, recipe. Now we. We have the paella has really evolved in Spain with seafood and with the negra and the fidua, but but basically it still remains in a very tight you know um, uh, range. So in the Philippines we do a lot with the paella. We even put olives sometimes, and you know that's unthinkable in Spain. So I think authenticity. Uh, we 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 embrace Spanish food, right? We have our bacalao, we have our calios, like the calios in Spain uses very little tomato. Here, it's tomato puree, tomato sauce. It's very heavy on that. And that's how we like it. But in Spain, that's not the way it's served. How does uh, Cangrejos uh, Locos compare to the, the Filipino-style Spanish food and the dishes in Spain? Well, we are closer to the, Span the authentic Spanish cuisine. We try to be very authentic. We try to use very good ingredients. If need be, we need uh, we we do uh, Spanish ingredients. But if we can localize it, we localize it. So we're nearer to Spain than the Philippines. And you're here to make sure that yes, the restaurant yes. maintains. Robby and I uh, look at the kitchen almost uh, every week just to check that we're maintaining all the standards uh, within uh, the original concept. So when did you start Cangrejos? Cangrejos started in, uh, we were supposed to open December last year. On the first and second months, we were already looking at two spots to open because we were just, you know, uh, had a deluge of customers here in Alabama and we felt that we should bring it to Makati, as you said, or to Malate. We were looking at uh, BGC, one spot in BGC and one spot in Makati already, before this thing happened. So all the plants are put uh, in the back burner. So I've heard about your pa paella, and I've also heard about your crabs. Yes. It's the black crab? No, no, no. We have the crab Roberto and the, uh, the cangrejos crabs. So, and we have the, the one with the angulas, you know, those baby uh, eel. Mm -hmm. We have that also. So, we have three types of uh, crabs. And we have also a crab bucket. What, what's the most uh, I think the cangrejos, the cangrejos crabs. Are Why? Because it's very tasty. The crabs are very fresh and uh, it's uh, sauteed. Uh, all the ingredients are sauteed in pure olive oil. So you can really taste the garlic and everything else with the olive oil. So we put a bit of, of paprika and some Spanish spices as well. Other favorites in your restaurant, of course, we have uh, tapas. Tapas, we have uh, croquetas, salpicao. Then we have the cucharas. The cucharas are those uh, like stews. The cucharas are the pabada, alios, and bacalao. And we have a very, very good ropa vieja. If you know ropa vieja. What's ropa? Ropa vieja means old clothes, but it's shredded sirloin. Sorry, old clothes? Old clothes, ropa vieja. Ropa is clothes, vieja is old. Okay. So old clothes, it's called, it's a very, it's more, uh, it's more sometimes uh, uh, South American, but Spanish. And uh, we have it here. Uh, it's very good. So, so what's ropa again? Ropa is clothes. No, but what's the dish? 
It's shredded um, rice cooked sirloin. Rice cooked sirloin. sirloin. Yeah. How does it taste? With olives. Oh, it's very uh, it's very meaty. Very. It has a bit of uh, cumin, so it has that uh, Moorish Spanish uh, taste. The people in Alabama, I'm sure, has embraced cangrejos because a lot of people here have uh, Spanish uh, heritage. And uh, how do you see the, the market growing some more after the COVID? Well, I'm sure when we get back to regular or normal, the new normal times, I'm sure a lot of them will flock back here. A lot of them are just not comfortable going out. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a lot of Spanish uh, people coming here and they find the food very authentic and uh, as a matter of fact, they usually take out food from, from cangrejos, even at this stage. That's a, that's a compliment because uh, my, my, my friends would say, you go to a, rest, to a Chinese restaurant, if you see Chinese yes. people there, that means the food there is authentic. Or Japanese with the a Japanese, Japanese yeah. yeah. So Spanish people go here in the Alabang area. Well, a lot of them go here for, for their meals. Okay, so thank you very much, Manny. Why don't you invite you. our Animal Magazine subscribers? Yes, all the Lassalites and the Animal subscribers come over to uh, Andreas Locos here at Molito Mall in Alabang. We're open from 10 o'clock up to 10 in the evening. So uh, you can come over for lunch or your merienda. You can have paella for merienda or you have dinner here. Uh, the surroundings are very safe. We have some alfresco tables. If you don't want to come in, there are alfresco tables outside. And enjoy authentic Spanish cuisine. To all of you, buen provecho.